on Broadway, so I'll have a Broadway show. <laughs> Here I, come. I told you, but you didn't believe me. Why didn't you believe me? Is it because I'm funny? Is it because I make you laugh? Are you laughing now? Are you entertained now? For 12 long years, nobody could do it. Some of the Best wrestlers on the indies, some of the best in the world, couldn't do it. And all of a sudden, one guy, one guy came along who was sick and tired of the same old hip toss, arm drag, tilt the world bullshit. And he did it. You wanna know why? Because as Katherine Hepburn once said to me, when you got it, you don't need anything else. And when you don't got it, it doesn't matter what else you have. And I guess I don't need anything else because I have it. I am swimming in it. I am wallowing in it. Hell, I just it my pain. I have so much it, it's on my fingertips, I can do whatever I want. With a camera in my face, with boots on my feet, with a pen in my hand, I got it. I don't love this business, this business loves me. I could wrestle for another 10 years, or I could leave it all tomorrow to go do a sitcom. So my advice to you, in the meantime, retweet my tweets, wear my shirt, buy a ticket, Sit down, shut up, and enjoy the show, because it will never be this good again. And that's not a shoot, that's not a pipe bomb, that's... entertainment. Their head... RJ? Dalton? RJ? Dalton? R.J. Dalton. What was that all about? It's personal. Don't worry about it. You know, ever since I broke the super indie curse, I don't feel like I'm as beloved by the wrestling fans as I should be. Is this better? Do you like me now? Because this seems to be the hot new thing in wrestling. Everybody's got a beard. You put on the TV, you see these beards. All these world champions have beards. Everybody loves a beard. But that's not me. That's not who I am. I'm just, I'm just not a beard guy. I don't get it. I mean, take a guy like Matt Cross, for example. What does it say about someone? How entertaining could he be if the only way he had a gimmick was to grow one on his face? I mean, who are you, Al Borland? Even Abraham Lincoln had a hat, too. But beard or no beard, people are very impressed by you. You won a title in Germany? Good for you. We all know how entertaining that country is. You're a world-traveled athlete. Congratulations, Beardo. You know something else? Right now, as we speak, this face is appearing on televisions in over 120 countries. And I didn't have to grow a beard to do it. But no, people say, hey, you gotta see Matt Cross in the ring, he's incredible. What a, what a wonderful athlete, what a wonderful acrobat. You dumb, bearded bastard. If wrestling fans wanted to see emotionless flipping, then we'd all be watching gymnastics on Monday nights. But you know what? Is that what you want? Then you know what? That's what we'll do. 
August 23rd, when we have our match at Cage Fury, you can come to the ring with, with a grumpy Russian gymnastics coach and a little tracksuit, bring your little ballet shoes, get in the ring, we'll put on some Sarah McLaughlin, you can do all the flips you want, don't forget your ribbon, you can do a little floor routine, huh? And then at the end, you can climb to the top rope and you can do your little, uh, your shitting star press. And then we'll look to the judges and they'll go 5.6, 4.7, 4.4. And then all I'll have to do is move out of the way, get to my feet, and smile in that camera. And the judges' scorecards will say, that's sweetheart what's your name oh I'm sorry you looked way better from up there <laughs> oh, come on that's not funny what's the purpose of that very sorry my apologies you know now that I've been doing so well in IWC, they've told me I could have the opponent of my choosing for Night of the Superstars. And I mean, well, who do I choose? There's so many superstars. It's Night of the Superstars. Unfortunately, Dom DeLuise is not on the list. But I looked at the roster and I thought to myself, well, how about Ricky Steamboat? But, you know, I think I've taken enough arm jacks. And then I thought to myself, how about the big guy? But then, on the other hand, I'm not really that big and I'm not that much of a guy. And then I thought, well, how about the Hardy Boys? Yeah, I could call out the Hardy Boys. But to be honest, I'm more of a fan of Nancy Drew, but there was one superstar that spoke to me, both literally and figuratively, and that's you, Mr. Anderson. Goo 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 choo, Mr. Anderson. Heaven holds a place for those who pray, and I am praying that you are willing to get into that ring with me, and you get a mic, and I get a mic, and we see who is the better man? <laughs> you think you can walk the walk? I don't really care because in my opinion, when you're staring at me, I don't even think you can talk the talk. Now that's not a braggadocious, that's not a overconfident, that's entertainment. We even have our own handshake, watch this. You see I lift my hand, he gravels, it's the perfect handshake. David Arquette has challenged me to a match July 15th in Hollywood, and my response is, hey, what are you, buddy, a piece of shit or something? I mean, why are you even doing this? Did Paulie Shore say no? Or maybe you think this is the perfect venue for your blunt overacting. Or maybe your therapist told you to do this so you could get the respect you never got because your family disowned you. Oh, no, 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 this is your big return to wrestling after 18 years, your big redemption story. Even though the only bump you know how to take is in the bathroom stall of a nightclub. And you want me to do this. You want me to schlep out to Hollywood in the mug and the heat. Well, I have news for you. Not only am I a better wrestler than you, I'm a better entertainer, too. You are wasting your time, Dewey. Go be a dad or something. But you know what? If this is what it will take to get you off of my Twitter feed and out of my life, then fine, you got it. You can have your match. But if you think this is going to be some kind of five-star classic, you are sadly mistaken. This match is going to suck. Your performance will be disappointing, and no one will care. And then you can go back to doing dinner theater in Massapequa or signings at conventions next to the kid from Deliverance. You can turn to him and say, yeah, I was a wrestler once. It's a tough racket. Well, I will be receiving a Golden Globe nomination for my starring role in whatever happened to David Arquette. David Arquette, do you think I'm really wrestling you to get famous? You're the one who started following me on Twitter. You're the one who used my name to get on TMZ. And you're the one who just ran up to your wife and said, Honey, honey, I have a new idea for a wrestling promo. Can you come film it? And she thought to herself, This is the father of my children? And then you just dragged her to the beach and you stood there in your shorts and black socks and you ranted and you rambled and the neighbors looked out the window and said, Ah, oh, don't worry about it. It's just that guy who looks for cigarette butts in the sand. And you've been training hard, really? What are your secrets? I would love to know how you got the physique of a grizzled 12-year-old. You see, David, there's two kinds of people in this world, in show business. The first kind of person is naturally born with talent, like me or the orphan. The second kind of person 
desperately clings to fame so they can pretend that they have talent, like you or Ben. You see, what happened is, a long time ago, you tried to make a quick buck off of wrestling and it laughed in your face. Now, 18 years later, you're trying again and what's changed? Have you gotten any better? No, wrestling has just gotten worse. The fans have lowered their standards, and wrestlers are desperately tweeting you so you wrestle them. By the way, boys, if you're jealous or upset that I'm wrestling David Arquette, don't be. There's plenty of hard-up celebrities to go around for everybody. Go try Frank Stallone. You thought to yourself, David, hey, these people could keep me famous and I can make a quick buck. So you put on your fanny pack, and you put on these wrestling shirts, and you sat in the front row like you're a big fan. Meanwhile, you're looking around thinking, how can I squeeze more money out of the same people who were gullible enough to plop $12 in a bag of popcorn down to watch Ready to Rumble in the first place? Well, now they can sit back and watch your last shot at relevance. The only reason you're doing this is because if you tried to leak a sex tape, it would go straight to VHS. You are the Michael Jordan of baseball of professional wrestling. And if you still haven't filled in the blanks, let's play a little game. <clears throat> the question is... Hey, what are you, buddy? A piece of blank or something? I can be the meanest Oh, so close. All right, never mind. Okay, I'll turn on you. Uh, I'll, I'll say something insulting to you. Okay, so listen, everybody, we're going to feud. Uh, we really yeah. appreciate your help to make this important. Woo! Play it up like it's really big. Yeah. It's really insulting. I'm going to say something really insulting, okay? Yeah. You got me on the talk show? I'm working on that, but we've got another match. Okay. At AIW against the production. The production, you mean they're their tag team champions? Yeah, it's for a tag team championship. Yeah, don't you think it's a little reckless, given your track record, to be challenging for a championship? Well, you know, I really have a problem with them outside of wrestling. They want to be actors, apparently. <laughs> What kind of morons would try to be wrestlers and also actors at the same time? They ought to be ashamed of themselves. I know. You know what? As far as I'm concerned, production, you're not going to be facing a former WCW champion. Yes, they you're going to be You're going to be facing a 1996 Blockbuster Entertainment Award winner. Huh? Yes. He's worked with Brando. Sure, it was Brando near the end, but nevertheless, and of course, he never won an Oscar, but his sister won an Oscar. That's going to count for something. Or the Kids' Choice Award. Exactly. The Kids... Choose this guy. Look at him. Look at how. Look at this physique. He's clearly in the Mickey Rourke phase of his career. He's hitting rock bottom. He's on his way back. Next stop, SAG Awards, my friend. This Listen, is going to be huge. As an actor, I've also worked with Macho Man Randy Savage. Right there. 
Can you get a better wrestler actor? To be honest with you, I may say I was also on a show that was in syndication. I have a web series that's been viewed millions, millions of times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll give you my resume at some point. Okay. So to be honest, as a wrestling team, we're, we're horrible. But as a team of wrestler, also actors, we're like the Legion of Doom. We're kind of unstoppable. So, uh, you know, AIW, I think I'm going to act like uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun. And I'm not going to be acting. I'm going to kick your ass. No, no, you're an actor. You should be acting. Okay. I'm confused. Get fucked! Get fucked! Get fucked! Get fucked! Get fucked! Get fucked! Every night of my life, you pathetic virgin bastard. Okay, this Saturday, November 9th, I will be wrestling in a four-way match at Crossbody Pro Wrestling in Kitchener, Ontario. It promises to have high-flying action and fun for the whole family. Okay, now that that's out of the way, I would like to address my thoughts to one of my opponents in particular, a man named Dan Ahausen. Now listen, Mr. Ahausen. I get the gimmick, okay? You're the kid I never sat next to in high school. You binged a season of Buffy, and now here we are. And you like to do a lot of creepy things to play mind games, and go ahead, do it. Play your mental chess, because I'm playing mental park cheesy, pal. You want to get creepy? I can get creepy. I once pleasured myself to the Ethel Merman disco album, and it worked. So I got problems, Dan. They're just a lot better looking than yours. Be careful what you wish for, because it might be time you face the music. Hey, Effie, I love that thing you do where you um, commercialize your sexuality as a defense mechanism. So I'm going to make this very clear. It's not that you're gay. It's just that you're annoying. You know what I mean? You're a very irritating person. There are thousands of wrestlers with a variety of sexual orientations, and none of them are this loud. So what I want to know is who hurt you besides your parents? Why are you like this? You know, there's a way you can be entertaining and engaging, but still have a sense of showmanship and decorum. It's called having charisma. You want me to call you daddy? Great. Because I've had issues with my father for decades. So if I have to teach you this lesson in person, there's no better place to do it than (sighs) Joey Ryan's penis party. But please, Indoor voices. Hello, boys and girls. My tag team partner and I will be wrestling at Bar Wrestling New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. And honestly, I'm not really looking forward to it. He's just upset because he can't find a date for New Year's Eve. Will you shut the fuck up? To see all the actresses he wanted me to hook him up with, they just haven't gotten back all right. to me. Okay, shut the fuck up. Okay, I have to team with Dan Housen and Shazza McKenzie against Sue Young, Candy Lee, and Zoe Lucas. Gee, it's so nice to be in a ring with the same people I was planning on avoiding if I saw them on the sidewalk the entire weekend. There are too many wrestlers, there are too many fans, there are too many dirty hands, and there are too many shows. Yet these promoters insist on booking these novelty freak show matches in the desperate hope that some fans will show up. And, you know, this is just an idea. I'm just throwing it out there. Maybe this business is slightly less popular than it was in the late 90s. Nevertheless, I have to have these matches and then I gotta go back to the hotel, I gotta go on Twitter, and I gotta pretend to be proud of my friends who made it, even though I really didn't like them as people before they were even famous. These are the immortals we are showcasing. This is my WrestleMania weekend, and I know what you're thinking to yourself, Archie, if you're so upset, why even go? Because I had a childhood dream, and I'm slowly realizing that when I was a kid, I was a fucking idiot. So, what is the tape on your finger? Why do you have tape on your finger? Because uh, of Howie. Let it ring on and I can't ring on. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. You know, I saw your wife last night and she didn't have a ring on at all. 
David Arquette said that if I teamed with him, he would get me on a talk show. So I've been teaming with him now for the past two years. And I haven't been on Jack Parr. I haven't been on Dick Cavett. I haven't been on Jenny Jones. I haven't been on anything. And now he wants to drag me all the way down to South by Southwest for the premiere of his documentary called You Cannot Kill David Arquette. Although clearly, you can certainly murder his career. And he wants me to team with him at the after party against Joey Ryan, who's a famous dick wrestler and also famously a dick, and Effie, who's got that cheap booty judge kind of vibe where you really want to pull for him, but then he opens his mouth and you realize you don't agree with anything that he says. So this is a message to the organizers of South by Southwest. You are backing the wrong star. You want an award-winning film? I have over a hundred hours of me making coffee in my underwear. I sing, I dance, and I'm working on a one-man show entitled Stuck Somewhere Between the Moon and RJ City. So David, let me make this very clear. I love you like a brother, but like a brother that the family doesn't talk to anymore. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm using you for your name. Well, it's really your sister's name. Hey, what are you, buddy? A piece of shit or something? Piece of shit! 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 In addition to the atrocities of the WrestleMania weekend shows, I'm also going to be at WrestleCon, which is not named that because it's a convention. It's named that because... This industry is filled with con men. So now I have to stuff all my merchandise inside a carry-on bag, because you know I'm not going to pay to check it. I have to lug it all the way to George Steinbrenner Field, because I guess the Yankees really needed the money. And I have to set it up on one of those plastic high school cafeteria tables next to some guy who was on Sunday Night Heat once and overpriced photo ops with an animatronic tarantula. And the whole time I'm just going to close my eyes and, and hope I sell enough to make up for my coffee date with Mark Henry. And I know what you're saying to yourself, RJ, how am I supposed to buy your merchandise when you're supposed to be a heel? Good question, so here's what we're going to do. My merchandise will be at the table, but I will not be at the table. I'll be off in the corner somewhere talking about Annie Lennox albums with Dean Malenko. There will be a donation box at the table. Simply walk up to the table, put your money in the donation box, and take the item you paid for without having to talk to me or see me or touch me, which is for the best because I, I don't want to hear your questions like, when are you going to get signed? And I didn't want to have to pretend to be interested in doing your shitty podcast. I'd also like to be commended for getting through this whole promo without mentioning the coronavirus as every other basic heel is desperately trying to do because the real disease is mediocrity. Anyway, I look forward to not seeing you there. Guests of the RJ City Show, subscribe to his channel, follow him on social media, and buy his t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com slash RJ City.